Hello, my name is Mike Stroh. I am the founder of the State of Mind Festival. And what you're about to see here is an incredible presentation from Ross Robinson of the mm -hmm. Holistic Life Foundation. I really encourage you to check them out. They are a crew of people from Baltimore who are doing amazing work bringing mindfulness and yoga to youth all across America and now in Canada and in other places. So without further ado, I bring you Ross Robinson of the Holistic Life Foundation, who's going to be talking about mindfulness and yoga for youth. Check it out. I teach you guys, you like um, our teacher, like um, even like with Ali Atman, we call it, and Andy, we call them the A team. Um, but their their teacher, uh, which is like my uncle, Uncle Will as well, um, always said, you know, we teach to make teachers. It might not be the most uh, financially rewarding thing, but you know, like, hey, like it, you are still rich because like when you teaching everybody mindfulness and that skill set, it just makes a more compassionate world. You know, they have like this crazy thing. I don't know if anybody watches Walking Dead, but you know, I, like uh, our founders, they're real into zombies, Star Wars, like, you know, they, they like all those type of shows, but you know, they say, you know, it's similar to like the zombies, you know, like one zombie, like a person gets infected with the zombie, but they say it's the same thing. And they call it like love zombies. Like if I'm compassionate to one person, maybe so happen they're going to spread that and you know we'll have a more compassionate world full of love zombies so you know love is the most powerful force in the universe and you know like that's the big takeaway but um a little bit about holistic life foundation um it's a non-profit organization that was founded um out of baltimore maryland um they actually started like in the community where ali and otman are from um in baltimore um just to like pinpoint it, I don't know if like anybody's uh, familiar with the Freddie Gray uprisings when Baltimore had those riots, like they're basically right there, like in the epicenter of um, where they started that, um, yeah, that organization. And with that, how it got started, you know, they wanted to, like, they were in college and they were just like, you know, like, how can we, like, what is our purpose in life? You know, they didn't know what they wanted to do when they graduated in college. It can be nervous. I'm like, I'm pretty sure as students, even as adults, sometimes, you know, you just like, what am I doing? Like, what is my purpose? Like, I'm tired of working this job. Or, you know, as students, you're stressed out. Like your parents, like, you got to be first place, first place. You got to have the best grade. You know, it's so much competition. It's going to be hard out here. And you're like, I just want to play my Xbox or my PlayStation. Like, I just want to chill out. Like, it, like, it ain't even that serious. Like, let me take a second just to be like, but you know, like, it's good to plan for the future. Um, but, you know, it's good to live in this present moment too and enjoy life. Like, you don't want to just, it can be hard. Like, with the expectations that's put on us, um, it can definitely put us in a little scramble. But um, they were trying to figure out their purpose. And, you know, they were like, they started reading these books. And Ali Ottman grew up on mindfulness. Um, Ali and Ottman are actually my uncle. So I've been around mindfulness like, well, they introduced it to me like in about sixth grade. But um, they grew up on it, but they kind of like lost their way a long time. You know, you know, it's not the cool thing, you know, like yoga, mindfulness, like it's very popular. But now we're talking about like uh, 20, 25 or 30 years, you know, even for those guys that yoga and mindfulness was not a cool thing, especially in urban Baltimore, like like yoga. Like I know we were all excited, like yoga. We were like yoga, you know, as kids and at the school program, they thought that we were going to give uh, give up. They thought we thought that they were going to give us some yoga. But um, they they wanted to find their purpose. So they started reading books and, you know, they were like, they started to get um, back into mindfulness, you know, like what's our bigger purpose. And they want, they came back to the community. Ali graduated first, Ali and Andres, and they came back to the community. And they was just like, wow, it is not the same community when we left. Like it's always been like a rough place, like where they're from, but it was still was that sense of community in that neighborhood. Um, if it was some violence about to take place, like the older guys in the neighborhood were like, hey, you know what, everybody go inside. Like, you know, um, just a respect level, like even just seeing younger kids um, like skipping school, it's just like, hey, why y'all not in school? Let me walk y'all to school. And when they came back into the neighborhood, it was just babies just raising themselves. Like it was that sense of community was gone. Like a lot of, 
if, you, if you're familiar with Baltimore, it's kind of like row homes. So it could be like 20 to 30 houses like on like um, on each block. And like nowadays, like you'll ride through Baltimore and it's like maybe like five people living on that block. It's just a lot of abandoned houses. It's uh, kids uh, not respecting the elders. It's just like they're raising themselves because it was like a, a big generation that was lost due to incarceration. Um, them being murdered, like uh, it, it's just like a big gap. So they were like, you know, we're going to go and start this at the school program. Their focus was to focus on sports. Like Ali's big football was a football player. Ottman played uh, basketball at the University of Maryland. So he's like, yeah, hey, we're going to teach kids sports. But they were like, we're going to incorporate like 20, 30 minutes of mindfulness. We're, we're just going to incorporate that and just see how it goes. Um, didn't even really look at it as a big deal. But the principal started to notice like, hey, like it's making a change. Like they're able to self-regulate in school, control themselves, like uh, control their emotions and just regulate through all that. And they were like, well, hey, she was like, why don't you guys just focus on yoga and mindfulness? Like, it's enough people doing like sports, you know, like that's like a dime a dozen, but like nobody's doing mindfulness. So they were like, Holistic Life Foundation was born. So, you know, they've been rolling ever since. They've been, uh, Holistic Life Foundation's been around for about 20 years now or t- 21 years. Uh, yeah, this year. So 21 years and we work in schools, uh our our primary focus is working in baltimore city schools that's like our foundation we service about thirteen thousand kids each week honestly that number has probably it's probably a ridiculous number now because like now we're like virtual and we're able to expand so it's actually kind of been a blessing um in disguise even through covid and everything that like our outreach has been able to expand um and now we work like nationally internationally um I know like I've done workshops um, in Syria, working with Syrian refugees. It's allowed me to travel all across the world. I've been to Germany, South Korea, like everywhere. Um, But we also work in drug rehab centers, uh, youth detention centers, um, primarily focus on people that cannot afford yoga classes or might not have that exposure because everybody can put on fancy yoga pants and afford to go to it, it can sound simple, like, hey, you know, these yoga sessions might be $25 a session, but those $25 add up real quick to people that really can't afford it. So they wanted to, you know, give that exposure out to people that couldn't afford it um, in underserved communities. But we realized, like, one thing that trauma does not just affect people in underserved communities. Everybody experiences trauma. Like, everyone here has probably ex- experienced at least one traumatic situation in their life. And everybody like needs mindfulness it's not something that just resonates with one population like it's it's a universal thing like we're all in it together so um yeah so we uh so we just want to focus on like you know just everybody that needs these services so um today i'm going to teach you guys some practices um because like i said I'm here to uh, make you guys teachers. So some of these exercises might be familiar to you, might be new, um, but I just hope that everybody, first and foremost, can take something away to help them self-regulate and you'll have tools in your toolbox because you never know when you're going to need that tool. You might have a hammer, you might have a screwdriver, might not need it for that situation, but you don't know when you're going to run into it or somebody even in your family or close, like your best friend, like they might need these practices. So not only can it help you, but like your others around you as well. All right. So while I do these practices, I'm probably going to sprinkle in a little bit about myself, but you know, I don't want to get carried away about myself, <laughs> but um, it's definitely powerful of how I've gotten into mindfulness too, because I was actually one of the first students that came through this program. So like I've been on both sides as a student and then as a facilitator, um, teaching yoga and mindfulness as that big brother, that mentorship. All right, so we're gonna start off with belly breathing today, uh, or they call it diaphragm breathing. We're gonna breathe in and out through our nose, three primary reasons why our nose acts as a filter. We all have nose hairs, 
in our nose, catches all the germs, bacteria, any dust, any dander. We know that COVID's going around, so we don't want to breathe that in. So like when we inhale, all those germs, bacteria, dust, dander get caught on our nose hairs. And the reason why we exhale, we want to push it back out into the atmosphere. All right. Next, our nose acts as a heater. Um, you probably don't notice it if you were like inside um, or if it's a warm day, but I know it can get cold up in Canada on, on a cold day during winter time. If you were to breathe in and out through your mouth, you've probably had that feeling of whether you were playing tag or running or just playing sports or just being outside for um, an extended time where you get that feeling in your chest where it just starts to hurt. You're like, ooh. And breathing in that cold air, it could shock your system and cause your bronchs to seize up. It could even lead to bronchitis. So breathing in and out through your nose, you have a device called a mucous membrane, makes your snot, your boogers, but it will also heat up the air that's coming into your body. And last but not least, our nose acts as a natural humidifier. Sometimes you see this device in your house, it's like some steam comes out of it, uh, where it looks like steam, but it's just putting um, moisture in the air because like the air can be dry, but naturally breathing in and out through your nose is that natural humidifier just to bring moisture. So we got filter, heater, humidifier. Next thing with this, as we're doing our diaphragm breathing, a lot of us, like we take a deep breath, we go, chest goes out, stomach goes in, but your lungs are shaped like a pear or like a teardrop. So when you go, you're only using 10 to 25% of your lung capacity. But if you breathe, imagine filling your belly up with air, expanding that, you get your full lung capacity and you exhale, Imagine pulling your belly button to your spine. So that's what we're going to do. And a simple way of thinking about it is just I'll reference like it to a balloon. Like what happens when you put air in a balloon? It expands. And what happens when you take air out of that balloon? It deflates. So that's the same thing our stomachs are going to do. So we're all going to sit up with our head, neck, back in a line. Feet planted firmly on the floor for a sense of being grounded. You can actually scoot towards the edge of your seat. Um, just to support your own spine, because if you sit back like this, or if you're like this, eventually you're going to be stuck like that. All right. So you want to practice good posture and you're able to take in more oxygen and you just feel better. All right. So it's your choice. I invite you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable. If not, you can pick a spot in the room to just soften your gaze. And we're all going to inhale nice and deep. Imagine filling your stomach up with air like a balloon and exhale that breath out. Imagine pulling your belly button gently to your spine. Inhale nice and deep once again. Imagine filling the belly up with air like a balloon and exhale that breath out nice and gently, pulling your belly button to your spine. Inhale nice and deep once again. Imagine filling the belly up with air. Exhale that breath out nice and gently, pulling your belly button to the spine. Inhale nice and deep once again. Filling the stomach up with air like a balloon. And exhale that breath out nice and gently, pulling your belly button to the spine. We're going to do four more uh, belly breaths together. We're going to inhale nice and deep. Imagine filling the stomach up with air like a balloon. And exhale that breath out, pulling the belly button gently to the spine. Three more. Inhale nice and deep. And exhale. These last two breaths, we're gonna to try to hold on to the breath a little bit longer. But if you feel any discomfort, you can slowly breathe out at your own pace. Don't force it. We're gonna inhale nice and deep. Imagine filling the belly up with air and gonna hold it, hold it, hold it. And exhale. Last breath, we're going to take together with the belly breathing. We're going to inhale nice and deep. 
hold the breath. I want you to use your imagination. See yourself taking in that nice, clean, inhaling oxygen, seeing it take its course throughout your body, inhaling and replenishing all your vital organs. And exhale that breath out nice and gently. Before opening up your eyes, I invite you to just take three deep breaths at your own pace, just to do an internal assessment, that self-test, just to see how your mind and your body are feeling at this point. When you're ready, you can slowly blink your eyes open. So out of everything I'll probably teach you today, you know, I'm definitely going to teach you some cool stuff. That belly uh, breath or just taking that breath is probably the biggest takeaway. Um, because naturally, like in life, like we all have like something that's our go to, like uh, whether I like to listen to music. Um, some people like exercises, running around, sometimes playing video games are our outlet. Um, everybody just has a different source. It might like playing with your pet, like your pet dog or your cat. Um, everybody has something that makes them happy, but guess what? That music, the video games, your pet dog, your pet cat can't travel with you, but you know, what's always with you, no matter what your breath. All right. So no matter how stressed out you are, even if you feel alone, you uh, you feel anxiety, you're sad. You always have that breath because naturally it's a natural occurrence in life that um, our teacher like says, like, you know, life can be um, like the waves, the ocean, our mind and the body are the boat. All right. We know naturally that storms are always going to arise in life. It's a part of mother nature. All right. But um, even through that storm, you got to have something to anchor that boat down. All right which is our mind and our body and your breath serves at that anchor. So when those waves come and it starts to rock that boat, if you don't have something to anchor you down, you can drift out to sea. That's what happens with boats. You know, if they're not anchored down, they can just drift out and we don't want to be lost in the sauce. So, you know, like life, life is going to come. Life is just a real thing. It's just going to be occurrences. We're going to I always say like, it's not a bad day. Like we have great days and then uh, some days that's just good not so great but you know it's good days but never a bad day because usually a bad moment is usually only like 30 seconds maybe five minutes but that's really doesn't dictate your whole day if you don't let it but um that breath is definitely your anchor your go-to no matter where you at so just taking a deep breath like I like to even advise like before you go to school take 10 deep breaths um before you like you leave school so you can leave school at school or work at work take 10 deep breaths and just let it go all right and just see how that works for you, you got to be a scientist with these practices i can sit up here and tell you like oh this is good for this that's good for that this worked for me and this way but the only way you're going to know if it works is if you're a scientist with these practices and you got to have that self practice all right so um, before we jump into our next exercise, I just want to share a little bit of my history. So I was one of the first students that came through this program. I am originally from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, Southern hospitality, you know, it was a different culture. And when I moved to Baltimore, it was a total culture shock. Um, people were not as friendly. Uh, definitely way more aggressive. You know, I spoke to my neighbors like, hey, how you doing? They're like, well, I don't know you. Why you talk to me? And I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, in Virginia, like, I know my neighbors like 20 houses down. Like, if I did something, like, the neighbors will come knock on my parents' door. Like, you know, your child was out here doing this. So it was just a culture shock. And it was the same thing when I went to school, um, trying to make friends. And I don't know you. Like, you talk funny. Like, why you talk like that? And I ended up getting into altercations um, constantly just because people made fun of the way I talk. Um, I was a real friendly person. Like everybody has like, or had their guard up like in Baltimore. Like it's just kind of like that thing of not showing the weakness, but yeah, I was getting picked on and it just led to me getting into altercations. Like by the time, like even walking to the bus stop, like 
I knew like I was just going to be in a fight. Like I'm, I'm fighting before I got to school. And it led to me having like a lot of anxiety. Like I didn't even like, I had problems going to sleep at night because like, I didn't want to wake up the next morning to go to school because like, it just hurt. And like, I'm pretty sure like everybody has that feeling. Like some of us might get picked on, people make fun of us, or we just be in that situation and we feel like isolated. Like, Hey, I'm the only person going through this and no one else understands me. And that's how I felt. And you know, that's trauma. Uh, It's going to be situations of life that we feel like that, but just know that, usually you're going through it it's probably other people going through it as well and even with those guys um that I was going to school with like hurt people hurt people like they're coming from a community where they're hurting they come from a household where you know somebody like upset them or just going through situations and seeing things so it was just kind of like a cycle but it just led to me just yeah putting my guard up fighting all the time and I would like pride myself, like I'd be ready. Like I would tell all friends, yeah, I'm ready to fight. Like, but nobody likes fighting and getting into altercations. Like that was just some macho stuff that wasn't cool. And like I didn't really feel good behind that. But when Ali Ottman and Andy like started with the Holistic Life Foundation, like I would go to the after school program and I was kind of resistant at first. I'm like, yoga, mindfulness, like breathing. Why are you telling me to breathe? Like it kind of sounds dumb. Like I'm already breathing. I'm like, why, why are you trying to tell me to breathe? Like I'm living. If I, I wouldn't be living if I wasn't breathing. So like, what are you talking about? So, you know, they would chuckle, but they never like forced any of us to do the practices. They will always say, you know what, we're just going to be here. We're going to be present for you. And you know, when you're ready, you're ready, you know, like as long as like we are safe and, you know, um, and being in that safe place, they didn't force us to do none of that stuff. It was a choice. And that was empowering within itself that they gave us that choice to come into it like when we were ready. But with these practices, like it took me, I was probably one of the last few students to really grasp it. Like I'm not doing no downward dog. Like that's not manly. Like, oh man, I'm bending over. Like y'all can keep the downward doggy. I'm gonna just keep shooting the basketball. But um, a lot of times we don't try things until we have that, dire sense of urgency you know the doctor could say hey you need to drink more water hey you need to eat vegetables like the dentist would say hey probably need to lay off that candy don't eat so much candy but then when you get that cavity or when you got to see the doctor and you're feeling unhealthy we're like oh, oh, no 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 i promise like i'll i'll, I'll go run around the track I'll, I'll, i'm gonna exercise more I'm, I'm gonna drink my water i'm gonna eat my vegetables and the doctor's like no it's, it's too late like i tried to tell you but we don't learn like we really don't do things until like our back is pushed up against the wall and you shouldn't do that i mean like i mean no judgment i mean because it's part of the human experience like we all do it at a time but like you should always try to keep an open mind if something's introduced to you in a positive manner positive people positive place hey you should try because all you can do is just be a scientist and be like you know what that just doesn't work for me it doesn't resonate but at least i tried it so I was not being a scientist. I was just like, I'm gonna do what I want to do. But I was getting in so much trouble. Uh, I had got expelled from school for like fighting a teacher. And I guess that's my karma because now I am a teacher. Lo and behold, that everything comes full circle. Um, but getting in trouble outside of school and I ended up, my mother was just like, you know what, you gotta go. And I ended up living with Ali Ottman and um, Andy and one day it was like uh I had this really really bad earache and I'm like oh my goodness like what is going on like it hurt to open up my eyes it hurt to talk and Ali came in because usually I'm playing like practical jokes and and throwing stuff at him and doing it so he like came over and he's like started shaking me like oh and I'm like oh my gosh he's oh like what's wrong with you I'm like I got this bad earache and he was just like I bet you try some stupid yoga now. Cause I always be like, I'm not doing no stupid yoga. So like he chuckled, like, I bet you try some stupid yoga now. And I'm just like, man, if you have some yoga that works for this, like I promise, like I'll, uh, I'll lead the uh, younger kids and at the school program, you know, like I'll do the yoga with you. you like every day. So he was like, all right, deal. Like we shook on it. And he taught me this exercise, which I'm going to teach uh, to you guys today, which was called alternate nostril breathing. And within 30 seconds of me doing this exercise, it was about like 30 to 45 seconds, probably 30 seconds. 
all this fluid like rushed out of my ear. It was like literally like somebody took a water bottle and poured the water like out of my ear. And it's a thing like people that experience trauma, they call it being an extra receptive genius. That means you're aware of everything that goes on around you. Like you can say like, oh, this person made me feel this way. And I remember you did this but being interoceptive. And that means just focusing on how you feel like internally and what's going on inside and what are your triggers and what, where are these emotions stemming from is non-existent when you when, non-existent when you go through trauma. So the first thing I, I am, I'm being an extra receptive genius. Like, no, oh, you messed up my shirt. Cause it was like airwax juice. I know it was kind of nasty, ew. But uh I, I was just like, you messed up my shirt. What was this exercise you made me do? Like, I'm forgetting my deal with him. And he was like, bro, stop, calm down. He said, how do you feel though? And then I'm like, oh my gosh, this heebie-jeebie stuff works. Like, oh man, this is like magic. Like, 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 what, what was that? What is, oh, oh my, it, like my pain is gone. And he was just like, all right, deal. Like, all right, I'll be ready for you to teach these uh, classes. You're going to do the yoga with me. And then I, do yoga every day. No, I probably was not a man of my word. But at that very moment, I didn't know this practice was real. And it really put that tool in my toolbox. And it really res uh, resonated with me that I have that tool. And I tapped into it for the rest of my life. And it was like, even when I started going back to school, after I was done being expelled, I started to make friends because, um, it wasn't like I, I would think people like judge me, but like I really wasn't happy internally with myself. So I probably was giving off that energy. Um, and I'm not saying yoga or mindfulness will make you the coolest per person. You won't be popular, but you can be popular with yourself, like love yourself no matter what's going on around you. And I started to love myself and I realized that like, all right, like everybody else would just be like, oh, you cool, man. Like, like what's going on? Like, I didn't even get to know you. And I just started noticing that I was happy with myself, that I made like a ton of friends and like school was just like a blast. Like it was just, oh man, like I'm loving it. Like, and just been like a people's person like ever since. Cause I was just real closed off. I didn't like people touching me, talking to me. Like I would be real shy now. As you can see, I'm probably like going on, but I could be a little social butterfly and talk with the best of them. So um, definitely a powerful tool. And just remember loving yourself, no matter what you're going through, um, that these practices and mindfulness, I'm pretty sure like we've been in this festival, we've heard the definition of mindfulness is being aware of your thoughts, your actions and your emotions. But that key part, a lot of us can be aware of our thoughts, our actions, our emotion, but from that non-judgmental standpoint, don't beat yourself up. Like you have yesterday, which is the past. And I like to say like my, my uh, go-to guy, Jamar Pete, he was like, you know, like I, I like to say mindfulness is just being where your feet are at the time. I would say that. And he was like, oh, you know, that's a good analogy, being where your feet are at this time. And he was like, well, if you're constantly looking uh, over, you know, you might trip over something if you're focused in the future, like, you know, being stuck in the future, it can create anxiety. It could also lead to procrastination. Um, I'm probably more on that procrastination side, you know, and I look in the future like, man, I, I do that homework tomorrow. Oh, you know, like, oh, oh I, 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 I got to get ready for this class. You know, I, I, I can get ready right before the class is started. You know, I, I don't need to do that. Or, I got five more minutes, you know, like five minutes is not going to hurt me. But then I'm in that traffic and you know, I'm just like, oh, man, I I'm blaming everybody. Like, everybody get out of my way. Like, everybody's driving slow. Like, no. Nah. But focusing on that future, like, you could trip over something. But then if you focus on the past and you always looking behind you, bam, you can run into something. But if you are focused in the present moment where your feet are at the time, you can maximize your everyday moment, all right? Because, like, if you, if you say, hey, I'm in this present moment, I'm doing the best I can, you're going to be good in the future because you're doing what you need to do now. Tomorrow's not promised. 30 seconds from now is not promised. So like maximize your present everyday moment. And uh, it's a great thing. The past is for learning lessons. Don't beat yourself up about it. A lot of people that stay stuck in the past are very judgmental with themselves. All right. And the future is just for setting goals. And the present moment is for like, you know, working your way to execute those goals, whatever that might be. And you want to manifest. So uh, with that, 
Um, we're going to jump into another exercise, but I just wanted to share uh, just a little bit of my background of how I got into it, because I'm pretty sure a lot of us can resonate. Like, my oftenness, like, it's more popular now, but it still can seem corny. Like, oh, you're breathing, or you might be in a different pose and doing yoga and all that. But a lot of times, like, I even had to learn, like, yoga is even bigger than stretching and being in a pose in a tree pose. Everybody just thinks yoga is like, I can put my legs over your head. Like, I know, like, everybody makes fun of me. Like, people still make fun of me now. Like, oh, you're doing yoga? What, you put your legs behind your head? I'm like, no, I'm not that flexible. But yoga just means connecting your mind and your body, all right? And with that, yoga, you could practice yoga without being in a pose. Like, breathing, focusing on your breath is a part of yoga. How you treat people is a part of yoga. How, what you eat, put into your body is a part of yoga. And at the end of the day, like yoga, when you go through, it's like eight limbs, but at the end, it's just finding that total peace and just realizing like we're one with everybody. Like every, like we're, it's like what they call like universal uh, consciousness. Like we're all together. We're all in this together. Like I'm no different from you. You're no different from me. Like we all in this as a community, one big happy family. So like yoga just gets you to that place of just being at peace and at, uh, being one with everyone. That is what yoga is. So I feel that we've been sitting probably and I feel like we should do a little bit of movement though. So we're all going to stand up. If you got that space, I'll give you some time. You may have to move a chair. I feel like we got to get that, get our bodies moving. So this practice that we're gonna do is called a half sunrise, all right? So all we're gonna do, this is called mountain pose. So we're just gonna stand up nice and tall and we're all going to inhale. Remember we're breathing in and out through the nose. We're gonna inhale nice and deep and exhale to the ready pose like this. And we're all going to inhale to a backward bend Exhale to the forward fold. So just try to uh, let your hands touch your toes, but if they can't, just let your arms hang. Perfectly fine. You're gonna inhale up. You're gonna touch your knees, but your back is gonna be nice and straight. And you wanna keep your focal point looking forward. And exhale back down to the forward fold. Inhale to a backward bend. And exhale, ready pose. Good job, everybody. We're gonna do three more. So we're gonna inhale, backward bend. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up, touching your knees, lengthening and straightening the spine. Keep your focal point looking forward. Exhale back down to the forward fold. Inhale, backward bend. And exhale, ready position. Two more. Inhale, backward bend. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, up, touching your knees, straighten out the spine. Exhale, back down to the forward fold. Inhale, backward bend. And exhale, ready position. I think we got one more. <laughs> We're going to do one more. If, if we don't, this is a bonus one. We're going to inhale, backward bend. I'm going to go really slow. I'm going to see who can keep up. Exhale, forward, fold. Inhale, up, touch your knees, straighten out your back. Exhale, forward, touch your toes. Inhale, backward bend. Exhale, ready, forward. All right, I was just wanting to see who is on point, who could keep up, who can keep up. That's just something we do, you know, got to make it fun. Like, you know, yoga's not about being serious all the time. You know, you got to have fun with it. You know, it's about life is, got to have fun, got to keep. So um, with that half sunrise, um, this exercise is good for building up your energy. Typically, the full sunrise would be like 12 movements. So it's half of it. It's like six uh, movements. Um, you might not have that much space. You might be in the classroom. Uh, I know teachers do not like to rearrange their desks. Like it's just how those desks are set up. It could take like 15, 
10 to 15 minutes to set up the tables and that's uh the way they were so like everybody doesn't have all that space all the time to whip out and just do mat mat based yoga but this is a good exercise you can just stand behind your chair if you don't have ample space in your room um but it's just good for just building up that energy um or getting rid of excess energy because sometimes i know my teachers can resonate with this you might have that students like, good morning, Mr. Ross. How you doing, Mr. Ross? You're like, oh my gosh, I haven't had my cup of coffee. Like, calm down. And even like my students, like you, like I, I'm pretty sure y'all feel that type of way. It might be your friend might come to you on level 10. Just good morning. How you doing? You're like, oh my gosh, like I need a second. Like, calm down. But then we might have that friend that comes in. You're like, good morning. They're like, good morning. And then they come put their head down on their desk this exercise can work for both of those. Like it's just building that energy up or decreasing that energy and be like, all right, I can get my cup of coffee or I get my cup of juice in the morning, you know, get myself going before, you know, I, I deal with this person on level 10. So definitely a good exercise gets the blood flowing throughout your body, um, full body stretch, you know, naturally in the morning, we want to stretch anyway. This really targets that and gives your body that full body stretch. All right, so next exercise we are going to do is called um, a spinal twist. So everybody, I want you to check your pulse, all right? So you could go like this, put your two fingers right here. You can place your hand on your heart, maybe both hands. You can check your pulse right here. I think the simple way is just really putting your hand on your heart, especially after the sunrise, you might be able to feel your heart beat. And just notice how it feels. Maybe notice the intensity, how hard it's actually beating. All right. So now I want you to remember that we're going to jump into the practice. So you're going to put your hands up like this, thumbs down, and then give yourself a handshake. All right. Called bear grip. But you want your arms nice and parallel. So you don't want them up here. You don't want them down there. You don't want them sitting like this. Got to keep them nice and straight basically at your heart center right here. And you wanna to scoot towards the edge of your seat because you're gonna need that full range of motion. And we wanna strictly turn at the waist. So I don't wanna see this when I be like, inhale, look, exhale, right? A lot of people just start turning with their arms. We're gonna actually keep your knuckles at your heart center. And as you turn, it's just gonna stay there. All right, so you're just turning at the waist. So we're gonna do a few of these together. So we're all going to Inhale to the left. Exhale to the right. Remember to use that breath. The breath complements your stretch. Inhale to the left. Exhale to the right. 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 Two more, stay with me. Y'all doing a great job, proud of y'all. Inhale to the left. Exhale to the right. Inhale to the left, exhale to the right. Keep your arms up because we're now we're gonna come to center and I want you to inhale and pull like you're playing tug of war. Pull, 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 and exhale. And I want you to put your hand on your heart and see how your heart feels at this point. Or just check your pulse. All right, so I don't know if anybody notices a, a change, but a lot of us might not even been able to feel our heartbeat at first. Like, where is my pulse? But now your heart should be like, boom, 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 boom. You can really feel it. You can pinpoint it. So when we put that pulling motion in, it actually strengthens our heartbeat. Like our heart is a muscle. We want to keep that muscle nice and strong because if your heart's not beating, 
you're probably not living unless you're one of those zombies that I was talking about at the beginning of the time, uh, at, at the talk. And I hope nobody's a zombie here, all right? Just be a love zombie, not a, not the other zombies, all right? But you'll, uh, you'll notice that, like, you know, the heart is beating, so you want to keep your heart nice and strong. Also, when we're doing that motion, you might have heard some <laughs> cracks, which is like calcium deposits. Uh, and those can uh, actually, like, build up and it can stop your blood from flowing properly. It can lead to things, uh, cardiovascular diseases, such as strokes, you know, heart attacks. So we want to keep our blood flowing. We want to break down those calcium deposits. And we just want to keep our spine nice and flexible. It's very important just for like our equilibrium, just walking, moving. Like you really don't appreciate it until you lose it. Then you're like, oh my gosh, like, like it was very important um, for just for me to keep my spine nice and flexible. Um, you'll probably even notice too when you do that pulling motion it actually strengthens and tones like your arms as well all right so powerful exercise so the next thing we're going to do uh is what we call a stress breath all right this is one of our go-to's uh because we have this program um when schools were open you know it's, now we just do primary like yoga classes but when schools were open um, for in-person learning, we had these rooms. That's probably like our staple, what we're like famous for, because like we started these rooms called mindful moment rooms. And students can come in there. They could, if they're like in middle school, high school, they could self-refer themselves, like, hey, I just need a moment to myself, or I just need a moment just to check in with these guys. Um, so we could do some practices and all that, but they can come there or, you know, the administrator or your teachers can refer students and they come in. We are like trained. We're not like counselors, but we know we're like that big brother, big sister. Like, hey, let me just practice. Listen, because a lot of times people just want to be heard. Like we feel like a lot of people aren't listening. People are just listening to give a response, but we're actually there to just really listen to them, you know, and if it's some advice that can be given, you know, we'll give it to them, you know, um, within our means, you know, if it's something out the woodworks, yeah, we got to just let the counselor know or maybe the administrator, but you know, most of the time, like we can just work through those situations and build that trust for them to talk to us. Um, so uh, with that, be and then we we can give them like water, we give them tea, but then we usually end off with a mindful practice, uh, a mindfulness practice, because at the end of the day, we don't want that student to keep coming. Like we love to see our students, but we really want them to learn how to self-regulate. So when they're in those situations, um, because it's cool while we're there during the school day, but what happens when that student goes home? Like, we're not able to travel home with them, but these tools and your breath can. So we just want to just show that, model that, you know, and teach those practices to them with that mindful moment. So this next exercise is probably like our go-to breath where we just do with students. It ends up being our students' favorite. It's simple. A lot of times people don't even notice what you're doing, but I will save the benefits for afterwards, but it's called a stress breath. So we know one benefit off top, it's probably good for dealing with stress, all right? So with this, you wanna make your breath audible, all right? So it's like you put your hand right here, act like you're fogging up the mirror. Oh my gosh, y'all breath stinks. So now we gotta do it with your mouth closed, I'm just playing. Now we're gonna do that same motion, but we're gonna do it with our mouths closed, all right? So we're gonna go. It's similar to like uh, our kids named it like the Darth Vader breath. It's just like that. <sighs> let the force be with you. All right. So we're going to let that force be with us. So make sure you just keep your breath nice and audible. It's very important. All right. So we can set up with our head, neck, back and align. Feet planted firmly on the floor. We're all going to inhale nice and deep. Hold your breath. Bring your chin to your chest. And exhale and gently lift your head up as you're breathing out. Still making that breath audible. Inhale nice and deep. Hold your breath, bring your chin to your chest. And exhale nice and gently. Inhale nice and deep. Hold your breath, bring your chin to your chest. 
And exhale nice and gently. Inhale nice and deep. Hold your breath, bring your chin to your chest. And exhale. We're gonna do two more together. We're gonna to inhale nice and deep. Hold your breath, bring your chin to your chest. We're gonna hold it, hold it. And exhale nice and gently. Last one, inhale nice and deep. Hold your breath, bring your chin to your chest. Hold it, hold it. And exhale. And I invite everyone to take three deep breaths once again, just to see how your mind and your body are feeling at this point. And you can slowly blink your eyes open. So this practice, the benefits, uh, like I said, it's good for stress. If you are feeling angry, where you feel like that blackout, man, like you're not even thinking straight. We all get there sometimes. This is a good breath to help to deal with that. But a lot of times, like, I'm pretty sure we all go through it. Like whether we have a big test to take, we might have a performance. It might be like our first day, like the middle school, the high school, first day to elementary school. We might be going to college, our first day of college. Like your first day in as a teacher, like working with a new group of students. Like we still get those nervous feelings, um, those butterflies in our stomach. This is a good practice to do to just help, you know, that nervousness go away and just to increase your focus. So whether you taking that test, because a lot of times we feel like, oh, we get that test in front of us and we're like, oh, I studied all night. I forgot everything. You really didn't forget everything. It's your nervousness being uh, stressed out is actually blocking you from just having that clarity to actually think and um, produce those answers that you study for. So taking this breath can, you know, help that go or just when we sitting in, uh, in class and we're like man I wish I was home playing Fortnite, Madden 2K, I like FIFA um, but just whatever game that you'd like to do like I, I wish I wasn't here talking I wish I could be texting on, uh, to my friends on Instagram I don't really feel like listening to my teacher like you gotta focus you gotta like you might miss some uh, important information I know like I had a teacher one time they were like, read the directions. And in the directions, they was like, you could skip number one and number two. But the first thing I do, I start doing the test and I'm like stumped on number one. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, and taking so much time and really filled out the test and like, you know, filled out all the answers. I was like, oh, I got it. And then she raised the test. She said, did anybody read the directions? And it was a few people that raised their hand. I'm not, I don't read the directions. I'm trying to get the most time on the answer. She was like, look at it. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like I spent so much time on question number one, I could have skipped it. Like, but as we, a lot of times we just in a rush, we stay focused on what's going in the future. I got to be first place, first place, first place. Nah, take the time, uh, take the time to be observant in the present moment, see what's really going on. All right. So that practice, very powerful go-to, um, and just try that out. Put that in your toolbox. All right. So I want to give you some time for some uh, if anybody has any questions, but I want to finish off with a silent reflection or a meditation. And I could take any questions that you might have. And, you know, we could be on our day. Enjoy. I know it's very beautiful here in Baltimore, Maryland. So I want to get outside and enjoy some nice fresh air today. All right. So we're going to um, I invite you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. And you're gonna to try to keep your body as still as possible. And I invite everyone to just inhale nice and deep. And exhale that breath out nice and gently. Inhale nice and deep once again.
and exhale that breath out nice and gently. Inhale nice and deep. And exhale nice and gently. And I invite everyone to just start breathing at your own pace, not putting any effort into the breath, but just letting your breath take its own natural course. Let your breath serve as a compass and guide you. And just notice the rising and the falling of your stomach as you continue to breathe. Maybe even noticing if you're holding on to any stress, any tension, you have any pain, any ailments in your body. Use the breath and focus on where you might be experiencing that stress, that tension, any pain. And as you exhale, I want you to imagine any stress, any tension, any pain leaving your body. And remember, if your mind starts to wander, you're thinking about lunch or what you want to eat for dinner tonight or going outside, or you just hear the air conditioning or the fan blowing or people talking in the background. Just acknowledge it because life is always going to be full of distractions. But then redirect yourself back to the breath. It's called a practice for a reason. So don't beat yourself up. This practice is about non -jud like no judgment. And the joy of this practice of just acknowledging those distractions and being able to notice to redirect yourself. And as you continue to breathe, I want you to imagine taking in nice, clean, healing oxygen that Mother Nature has to offer you from the plants, trees, bodies of water. Really seeing that nice, clean oxygen coming into your system. And as you exhale at your own pace, I want you to just push out any stale carbon dioxide, but return that blessing to um, Mother Nature because she feeds off of the carbon monoxide. So like everything, it, I mean, carbon dioxide, sorry, not monoxide. Hopefully you're not breathing out carbon monoxide, but everything comes full circle. And those blessings just keep coming. So be joyful of that. And as we continue to breathe, I want us to think about somebody that we love. This person could be your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your children, if you have any. You might not have talked to this person in a long time, but love is the most powerful force in the universe and can reach all. So as you inhale, I want you to just take in positivity. But as you exhale, I want you to send yourself some love with each exhale. I mean, send that person some love with each exhale. I'm sorry. Really seeing that love reach that loved one. Think about how good you feel sending that love to them. Think about how good they feel receiving that love from you. And know that this gift, this blessing is always available to you. And as you continue to breathe now, I want you to think about somebody that might have stressed you out, might have angered you, it might be that coworker that gets on your nerves, it might be another student that made fun of you, uh, made you very upset. It's all right. We just acknowledge it and we're going to send them love too because you get out what you put out into the universe. And that's probably what they were lacking in the first place and why they were getting on, on your nerves that they weren't feeling love or they didn't have self-love. So we're going to send that person love each time you exhale. Send them that love. It's the law of nature. A positive and a negative always has to come out to be a positive. So always try to be that positive life force, even in the midst of negativity. Doesn't mean you have to talk to them. Sometimes loving people from a distance is the best thing we can do but don't hold on to anger or hate, send them love. And we're gonna to move to the most important person to always love. And a lot of times we forget to love this person and that's ourself. So as you exhale, I want you to just send yourself some love. You know, as you inhale, I want you to just continue to take in that positivity that the universe has to offer you. As you send yourself love, I want you to feel a sense of a empowerment 
because this is a gift that no one can control or dictate but you. So no matter how hard life gets, no matter how upset you get, or life making you upset, you feel like life is making you upset, always take out time to love yourself. We're all special. You're special. You're important. You deserve it. Love yourself. And we're slowly going to move our attention away from our breath and back into our body so you can slowly start to wiggle your fingers, you can wiggle your toes, roll your wrists and your ankles. And I'm so sorry. You can slowly blink your eyes open, come back. And I think I can fit it in. If you don't mind staying with me for a minute or two, I did not teach you guys the alternate nostril breathing. I'm so sorry. So I'm going to teach it real quick. So what you're going to do, you can take your right thumb, put it on your right nostril. You will inhale through your left nostril. Take your pointer finger, you're going to close both nostrils. Release your thumb, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right nostril. Close it. Exhale through the left nostril. We'll do one more cycle together. We're gonna to inhale through the left. Close it. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close it. And exhale through the left nostril. And very impactful practice. Your left nostril represents lunar, your right is solar. So you always have one dominant nostril throughout the day. So usually during the daytime, your right nostril is dominant. At nighttime, left nostril is supposed to be dominant. Sometimes those get flipped around. And if you might've noticed, like some days you'll wake up in the morning and one nostril is like free flowing, it's cool. And then the other one feels stopped up. That's your body's natural way of just saying it's like off track. So, um, it actually taps into two different, uh, um, both of your, uh, you got two different hemispheres of your brain. So your left nostril affects your right side, your right side affects your left side. So your left nostril, if you was to focus on like art, music, you need that creativity, like art, music. Um, yeah, even English, like writing papers, you got to think outside the box, you would tap into the left nostril. If you was focusing on math, science, with that analytical thinking, um, you know, just thinking with like logic, like, all right, dealing with numbers, you would tap into that right nostril, all right? And like, you could just increase it. So like, you could really do like an exercise called like breath of fire, like, I know it looks a little funny, but it actually like intensifies it and you can um, boost your energy up or, you know, if you're having problems going to sleep at night. So definitely a great one. And I just want to leave time just I know we're a little bit over but just take any questions or any feedback or <laughs> I got I can't I can't help myself. Sorry, Ross, thank you so much for being here. It's so good to participate in that. And I wanted to just thank everybody because I know kids are kind of at the end of their day. And they may take off but this is the wraps up our youth side of the festival. And so I'm just tremendously grateful to Ross, to you, to David, to Jennifer, James, the other athletes that were here and everybody and the teachers and everybody who's come. And um, just the Holistic Life Foundation, I guess when I learned about it and when I connected with you guys maybe four or five years ago, um, the, the mentoring that I've received from Andy and just learning from everything you've done is in, just been so helpful for me personally and for us for starts with me as a thing we aspire to be more like you and and hlf so thank you so much for doing your work and thank you for that awesome time and i'll stop talking now thank you thank you
Ross, maybe I can ask you a question for who, who's ever willing to, to stick around and, and listen. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. When, sometimes when I think about meditation, um, I get worried about, well, how is this going to solve my problems? What, how is it going to address me um, being bullied at school? Or how is that going to help my, the loved one who is sick? Or, or the, the concern and anxiety I have about work? How do you, how do you navigate that? How, how does meditation and, and mindfulness and yoga help deal with some of those really like concrete things that all of us will face uh, in our lives, whether it's, you know, like what you said with, with being bullied and feeling excluded. How, how, how do you think about that? What, yeah. So like mindfulness, like in a sense, you know, uh, I'm not going to say like, it just, it's going to erase all your problems, but what it will do is to help like slow down your thoughts. Cause a lot of times when we're stressed out, we getting bullied, we're just stressed with work, school work, like, our oh, mind is just in the scramble. Oh my God, I'm just going through this. Like, I'm tired of this. Like, I'm the only one going through this. Like, this is just really stressing me out. Like, my office teaches you to just, whoa, pause and just bring yourself in the present moment. Cause, like, a lot of times, like, you'll realize, like, these situations aren't as bad as we make it. Like, our minds can, like, our minds are always working. Like, even when we go to sleep, we're dreaming. Like, it's just, it's really hard for people to just clear your thoughts and just stop and not think about nothing. So mindfulness just teaches you to hold that space of just bring yourself in the present moment. And, you know, through this, like it leads to greater compassion for yourself first and foremost. And when you start loving yourself, you'll notice like, you know what? All right, this person's bullying me, but you know what? I love myself too much to even go through this. Or I just realized like the stuff that you are saying is not even true or the person that's stressing you out. Like, a lot of times like you might it might be what they say like usually when you're upset it's kind of like looking in the mirror is usually if something is really bothering you it's probably something that is an issue within yourself that we have to deal with so like mindfulness just you know just teaches you to like uh go through those uh ha have control over your uh self-regulation just control those emotions or even realizing that trigger like you know what I see this person's about to start with me. Let me back away from the situation or let me just take a deep breath so I'm better equipped to do uh, to deal with that. All right. Thank, thank you so much. That's a great answer. Thanks. You're okay, welcome, well, everybody. I just see all the thank yous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, Ross, I just echo what Mike said. Thank you so much so much wisdom um i will admit i'm not a big yogi i'm not i'm not a big meditator my mind is too active but just taking this moment to breathe through one nostril and another wow i can really see the power i can imagine um how useful it was for you given all that you shared with us today so maybe i'm a bit of a convert i may be a bit stubborn i may not practice every day like i should but bit by bit um your journey is a bit inspirational for me so hopefully i can implement it into my own day and and to all the students and teachers, hopefully you can do the same. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you again, Ross. Thank you to all the students and teachers who showed up to this wonderful festival. We hope to run it again next year. Please come back. Please tell everyone about it. Uh, we're always looking to make it better, more impactful, more meaningful for all of you, more inspiring. Uh, so you can be your best self in whatever you decide to do in your life. Um, there's one other organizer, uh, Jen. I'm not sure if you want to say anything. You know, I don't. I don't want to put you on the spot, but feel free to throw in a few words if you want. Uh, no, just thank you, everyone. It's been a wonderful experience. Um, yeah, it's a bit sad it's come to an end, but I hope everyone um, really got something from it. So thank you, and uh, thank you so much, Ross. So I look forward to the next time I get to spend some time with you. Looking forward. I'll see you at Omega. Yeah, I'll see you <laughs> in Omega. Okay, everyone, all the best. And, and Ross, thank you again. Take thank care you. and be mindful. Thank you.